What's up, everybody? How you doing? I'm to hear more. I'm Patrick Cloud. And this is another episode of Damn Internet. You scary. We remote. Happy Indigenous Day. Yeah, man. Um, which is crazy because I, I don't, do schools still get off for Indigenous Day? Post Columbus. I figured. Day. I know they don't they don't in Glendale, so I didn't know if LA you you oh it's a different school system out there. Yes. Yeah, they just observe different holidays. You know what I mean? Oh, because it's like a lot of Armenian people, right? I guess. I mean, but I mean, even when I was growing up in, I was going to school in St. Louis, but living in East St. Louis, Illinois, District 189, that was their, their, their school district for East St. Louis schools. They always mm -hmm. got off more holidays than the St. Louis did. Like they got off Lincoln's birthday and Washington's day. So we only got off, I think, George Washington and uh, a president say we didn't get off for Lincoln's birthday, but. Illinois recognized him and they always gave them off and they got off. They got off all the holidays, nigga. If they got off like 14, we got off like seven. Damn. Yeah. So it was, it was just different. It was different. That's a lot more. <laughs> it, it, it is significantly. My cousin just be chilling in bed. I had to get up. I was hella mad. I didn't know there was that many holidays we were ignoring. I, I don't know. Like I can, I, I would have to look it up to tell you all of them. But yeah, man, they got all significantly more holidays than we did in St. Louis. Yeah. Wait, what's up, Quentin off? White? Quentin said he finally made a live show. Welcome, up, brother. Quentin? We've been waiting I've never, on I've you. Never seen that name? Yeah, man, we've welcome. been doing this the whole time, waiting for Quentin. We was going through the roster. <laughs> like, man, I've never seen Quentin here, man. We got to keep not going here. We Quentin can't X start. Makes one, man. Shout we out to MTM, start. AJ, Tiffany. What's going on? Appreciate you pulling up. Taylor's in the building. What up, y'all? Um, Taylor says she worked for the government. They still open. Yeah, I know. It'd it be like that sometimes, Tay Tay. Damn, where you, <laughs> what you work for? Are you a, you a narc? Taylor out here narking on the folks. Mm -hmm. Government, all government jobs get a bad rap because of like the, <laughs> the law forces. Because of the government. Yeah, I know, right? right? I'm, I'm actually just a grant writer for HBCUs. We'd be like, ah. Nah, you a cop. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody, everyone who works for the government is a cop. <laughs> like, I ain't really got nothing. I don't even like cops. Like, I don't like them. I Not a fan. Not a fan. How you doing, man? How was your weekend? Weekend was chill. Brother just had a baby. I saw. Young Legend Houston is in the in the building. Hey, wait, his name is Legend Houston? Le my brother wild as hell. Yep. That's Legend. actually dope. Man, my god sister Kelby, the one you met from St. Louis, the one that always keeps two guns on her. Her yep. son is named Legend too. Oh, dope. What's her? What's his last name? I, I think he got his dad's last name because hers is Estes Nelson. I don't think it's that. So I think he yeah, got his dad's last name. When you have a wild first name, the last name is like really important because it can make you look sound like a like an author or just sound <laughs> like somebody just crammed two things together. Because sometimes it. Sometimes it flows. Like I like Legend Houston. Yeah, Legend um, Houston is nice. It flows. It flows. Definitely the most I've and ever it, been around a baby. It like honestly Irish fits y'all family. You and your brother are very eccentric, very creative, uh, very, very just life of the party. And Legend sounds like he's gonna be right on par with that. I hope your so. brother be dancing his ass off. Hey, my, I think he's gonna be the exact opposite of my brother though, because like the I don't I'm never around babies and stuff like that. Uh -huh. Which is why I refuse to hold him. I haven't held him yet. I'm Wait, you like, haven't held your nephew? I'm like, no thanks. Hey, you a wild bro. You wild. You a wild boy, Pat. Now, but the thing is, it's like babies are so fragile. They're just they just got here, and people drop stuff all the time. So for for them to just everybody was pressuring me, like you gotta hold him. You gotta hold him. I have no experience, so I was just telling them. I was just telling them that it's nepotism, like to, for me to get that opportunity, and I have no experience with the baby. <laughs> that's nepotism just to hold a baby. Yeah, like, just because I'm your brother, the way you think. But I'm not gonna <laughs> lie, I have my most intrusive thoughts when I'm holding babies. You can't you, you just be like, "What if I dropped him? What if I threw him?" Like it's a lot of, and then somebody's whole life is over. They're just so mad, and now all of a sudden, Patrick, how could you do that? Blah blah blah. Right. And it's like, but you trusted me. Is that a bowling ball pin? Oh, that's yeah. the bowling ball pin. Yeah, this is the one I did for my birthday. Uh, mm -hmm. But I was like, "What if you hold a baby?" I'm like, "What if I just grab this motherfucker like this?" Be like, oh, <laughs> 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 what if I just shook the nigga like this? 
<laughs> I was Man. just like, I was just like, hey yo, I got I'm going to just wait. I'm going to wait until I see it, see it more. But I think he's going to be the opposite of my brother because my brother's all like, yeah, let's do stuff. And like legend just be like, like we took him outside for the first time and he was just like, oh, God, no, this world sucks. You learn to love it. And he, listen, at that age, he's not even seeing clearly. He's just seeing shapes right now. Like he can't make out faces. Mm -hmm. uh, he can't make a description. So everything is like, nigga, what, what is this? I mean, you've been trapped crazy. in the darkness. You've been getting fed through your belly your entire life, and now niggas snatch away your food court, right? Put you in all this sunlight around all these people. This nigga's like, hey, this is a lot, bro. It, I never thought all of it All my like sound that. was muffled prior to this, okay? Y'all niggas talk loud, bro, and now this sound coming out my voice, I don't like none of this. You think they don't see color yet? Uh, Color happens before the shapes take place. Let me look. Let's see. Yeah, I heard that uh that even the 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 color of your eye comes later. Like a lot of people start with brown eyes and then all of a sudden they're green or blue, which I didn't mm. know. I, I thought they came out with the Oh, you meant that color. color. I thought you said like like they they're they're colorblind and for That's what I meant. Yeah, but I was just, Okay. I I didn't know that their oh, eyes oh. actually changed colors. Baby. Yeah, man. A little little newborn baby action. The the house is filled with presents. Let me ask you this. Do you feel the pressure now? Of what? Putting out one yourself? You got to put out a new mixtape too? Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> My mom has already started. Like, she's trying to give me names and stuff like that. And I'm like, no, you just got one. <laughs> and me it's and my a... sister both don't want him. So I think it's it's very <laughs> it's very appropriate that his name is Legend. Because right. we, we thought the Houston them. bloodline was done. <laughs> First, last of his house. Legend yeah. Houston. <laughs> It makes uh, sense. As the months go on, they will slowly start to develop their color vision around four months. So, yeah, he's still all black and white right now. He's still Dick tracing it up. Whoa, this nigga's in a noir, a noir Man. detective movie. He I never knew that. <laughs> so, our gifts really don't mean nothing because we Bro, just be giving him gifts. like colorful animals. Yeah, all of the toys, all that shit. Get, get that man a sock filled with some other socks and just draw some eyes on it. He'll be Old fine. Man gifts. Oh man! I gave him a, a burrito blanket, and that's the my favorite gift that I gave him because they wrap him up now, and he looks mm -hmm. like a he looks like a little uh, little carne asada burrito. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's definitely I the can't type. See of Ryan being a dad because he's so like, well, I just picture him like so active in the nightlife and and uh, and party scene, mm -hmm. and like now him just settling down as a dad. I feel like he's gonna be the cool dad though, like. Definitely. Yeah, we'll so. see if this sits him down, though, because my brother is the type of person he'll be like, man, I got invited to this yacht party, but I'm such an introvert. I don't want to go. And then two hours later, his story is just like all of, like, yeah, that's how he's always been. Like <laughs> your brother considers himself an introvert. He's definitely not. But when he talks, when he talks to you, he's just like, I'm so tired. I don't want to go to this party. <laughs> And then he's and then he's out to like five a.m. So we'll see if this sits him down, but I don't know. <laughs> That's funny. That is funny. We're definitely yeah. preparing to have a, a a holiday a holiday season just in the house doing. Stuff. Oh, yeah, especially with the new baby. You can't have him around too much right now. Mm -mm. At least he missed the the quarantine though. He won't be a quarantine baby. All the babies born in the quarantine. I feel like all them motherfuckers gonna be weird for a little bit. Yeah, he, that's that is right. He kind they of. Yeah, he post quarantine baby. His his uh his communication skills and people skills are probably gonna be way better. Mm -hmm. Quarantine babies, I feel like they're gonna have trust issues for most of their life. Like I don't, I don't. All these new niggas coming around. It's like you're thirty. <laughs> 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 you were only in the house by yourself with your parents for like eight months, bro. Calm down, nigga. That's true. I did see uh there's that viral video of that toddler who. I guess she spent her like developing years during quarantine and she was going up to like trees and all these things looking for uh hand sanitizer. Like she was like, oh. like getting sanitizer from the fire hydrant and stuff like that. And I was just like, man, these are the weird effects of quarantine that we didn't even think of. Yeah. That is true. <laughs> and it's true. And now when I'm at restaurants, if I grab something to eat, like something quick and I don't see like a hand sanitizer, they don't have like the bottle out for the public. I'm like, what the fuck y'all doing in here? 
Whereas before that, I never would even looked at it. Like I always keep it in my car. I would have just went back to my car, but now I'd be looking for it. And if they don't have it, I went to somewhere and they had it behind the desk. So I was like, can I get they were like, oh, this is for the employees. I'm like, Bitch, you better give me give me sanitizing some of their gatekeeping. <laughs> Yeah, they was like, "Well, this is for the employees." I was like, "You better give me some of that damn hand sanitizer." It's already too much hand sanitizer, especially the liquidy ones. Yeah. But I, I, one of the, the the random effects of pan- pandemic that I didn't know until I started traveling. I, when I was in Ni- Niagara Falls, there's a place called the Skylon, and it's like uh-huh. this. It's them tall ass restaurants that rotate and all that stuff. Yeah, and at the top of it is a buffet, and I just I I couldn't do it. I couldn't, I got a drink. I went in there and then I left. Cause like it's, and it's, it's, it's no shade to anybody who likes buffets, but it's just like, yeah. now it's like the, the, the idea of too many people being over mm-hmm. or around your food. It's just, it's, I can't do it anymore. If it's not prepackaged and made by like one or two people, I can't do buffets. You gotta, you gotta, you gotta build your immune system up before you go to a buffet. Take some, some echinacea, <laughs> some vitamin C and vitamin D, and then take some alka seltzer. Then you're good. That'll kill any and everything that you might meet at that buffet. Then you yeah, be- they're the buffets are great. Like hanging out the bowl and stuff. I can't. Buffets uh, are great when you want to taste a lot of stuff all at the same time. But like, when I is that? I was just say I don't get that often. <laughs> <laughs> you just like, no, I want some pizza, fried chicken, ribs, and macaroni and cheese. Ah, forget go to corral. Here I come. No, I, oh God. And it's just like, I, I can, I can just picture people. Cause you know, you see them clips every now and then of somebody like taking a sip out of the soup ladles and stuff like mm. that, or like sneezing and coughing. I, mentally, I can't, I'm not there anymore. Hey, let me ask you a question. What would you do? I went out with someone, right? Someone I used to, someone I used to date, right? Mm-hmm. Promised to take them home. And uh, we got into it. On the way home, because this person felt like I was trying to leave them when they told me I could go ahead and go because I was waiting for them. They never came. They said, you can go ahead and leave uh, if you want to. I felt like you was playing with my time. I did, right? Wait, wait. So y'all never hung out? No, we we went. We met up at this, uh, this event. And then yeah. on the way back, I offered the ride home, right? So I said, hey, I'm ready to go. Uh, they were like, hey, I'll be right out. Cool. I go out to the car. I'm waiting. They said, you can go ahead and leave without me if you want. I'll say, well, wait, how, how long how long were you waiting before you uh got upset? Um not long, but I the, the reason I got a little frustrated was because I asked this person five times previously, hey, do you just want me to run my errands and I just come back and get you? And they were like, No, right? So long story short, we're getting into it on the way home. Very very disrespectful. They were very disrespectful in the things that they say, the type of language that they use. And then they call me a specific cuss. I don't play about bitch ass nigga, right? Or any forms of calling me a bitch. Don't play that shit at all. They called you a bitch ass nigga for wanting to leave? <laughs> Damn. Right. So get back to her place, get to the garage. And because I refuse to like go grab a drink with them or go up to their place. They refused to get out of my car. Wait, so y'all were already upset with each other and then they got mad that you didn't want to keep hanging out? No, they got mad that I didn't want to hang out after they had just went on this irate tirade, tirade right. and then and cursed me out and called me bitch ass niggas all of this and then wanted to still go hang out, right? That's what I'm saying, yeah. Yeah, and I'm like, what's wrong with you? Like, why the fuck? Why, why would I want to hang out? Trying to invite me up to the crib, all of that type. No, just I'm ready to go. Refuse to get out of my car. I'm talking about for 30 minutes, right? 30 minutes when I get out of the vehicle to the point where I felt I had tried to talk to this person with patience and grace. I never raised my voice, never cursed, not once, right? I was left with no other option. I called the police. Told the police what had happened, right? I let the police know, hey, just let you know, I do have a weapon in the vehicle. She was like, all right, just make sure you tell the the, the responding officers that immediately. Do not touch the ve- I mean, do not touch the, the weapon until they instruct you to all of this, right? She's like, I'm going to transfer you to the non-emergency number. Transfers me. That person gets on. She tells me to tell that person 
the same story. And I do. She says, okay, I'm going to sit out of unit, stay on the line. I'm on the line, Pat. Wait, are you sitting next to this person the whole time? I'm I'm standing outside the car. I'm outside the car. I'm on the <laughs> I'm on the phone for 25 minutes on hold. So that means Cops. we're we're at we're at about an hour now, right? Cops never come. Never. I come. mean, I they, felt they, they've so not come to more like you know urgent things too. <laughs> yes, yes, but it's like at this point, it's like the feeling of helpless, helplessness, and frustration is now at a thou wow because it's like I've tried to be patient. I still took the person home. I didn't engage in the negative energy. I didn't engage in the negative uh, communication. I didn't go to name calling. I called the cops. People are walking by. They see me pleading with her to get out the vehicle. I got the doors open so the camera can see clearly in the side of the vehicle. I'm doing everything I can. And then for the cops not to show up, that level is just like, what, what do you do in a situation like that? Finally, she was like, just get in. Talk to me. Talk to me for 15 minutes and then I'll get out the car. 15 minutes turned into another 40. It was, was about that conversation at least good. No, absolutely not. It was, it was, it was, it was absolutely not productive and nothing different. She had said than already on the road. And she just wanted to get it off again. I honestly felt like the person, because even after that conversation, they were trying to get me to come back to the crib. I feel like she was just killing time because she had already set up something else and she was just uh, waiting on that person to get close. So she just inconvenienced me. Like she didn't have a key to get in? No, no, she did. She was just like, like if you set up some ass that's going to meet you at your crib, but they're about 40 minutes away. So you like, fuck it. I ain't got nothing to do for 40 minutes. I'm going to inconvenience this other motherfucker. Never let the elevator up or some shit like that. That's, that's what I thought I think happened. But I've never been felt so helpless in a situation in my life. That's kind of a overall flabbergasting story. All right. I got some questions. So I left I gave I gave you the super condensed clip right. notes version. It's it's so much shit that went on. I was just like So so I'm gonna ask the same question Taylor did in the was she intoxicated? Is that did that play a part in this? She had had Maybe two drinks prior to, but no, I don't, I don't, I don't think intoxicated. Just, uh, just not a good person. So basically, you were like, "I'm ready to go. Do you want me to come back for you?" She said, "No, I want to go now," which is crazy because if she set something up that was later, she could have just taken the first offer. But I think she set something up later once I refused to go up. So like, I'm thinking like when we first got back to her place, I think she she was texting the person like, "Yo, you should come through," type shit. And then, again, this is all speculation. I don't know for sure. She could have literally just been that petty and be like, I just want to fuck up your night. So you guys weren't in an argument at the event. This happened on the car ride to her house. Yep. And it was all over the fact that she she took a minute to get to leave. No, it was over the fact that I was waiting for her after asking like the number of times. And then it went to... Um, when I, I when she said you can leave if you want to, there was two different texts. If you want to, cool. I took off. Boom. She comes outside. She says she came out right outside because she was joking when she sent that. Oh. And I was gone. And then I just came back around the corner, and she gets in the car, mad. I read, it was like, uh, uh, you left a black woman outside in the dark like this. I could have been kidnapped. I could have been raped. Mind you, we're in Glendale, at a community center. That's populated with almost a hundred or more people because it was at uh, uh, an event. So, and you were outside, you were literally were outside the door. Like this is her, this is the door. It could have just went back inside. So it was like, you weren't out there just like walking around at all, at all. And that somehow <laughs> turned into you being a bitch ass nigga. <laughs> Why would you leave a black woman like that? You just leave me out there to get raped. I I could have got raped. I could have got killed. I could have got killed. Anything could have happened. All of that. All of that. And you were still cool at that point. It was the bitch ass nigga that set you over. You know what it was? It was because I knew 
you ever you ever been with somebody you know, like trying to talk them down is heal. It's not gonna help, right? So it's like I'm not gonna engage with this because they're never gonna hear from my point of view. They need to get this out, so I'm just letting it get it out. Plus, arguing with this type of person only leads to both of y'all yelling and nobody being hurt. So it's like, why even, why even engage? Damn. So what would you have done in that situation? I mean, I might have. Was there a CVS nearby? I think a, uh, I would just fill a water bottle with, like, <laughs> I would spray a spray bottle and just start spray, <laughs> spraying them like a cat until they got out. I honestly, I honestly don't know because it seems like this person was a advanced level of I don't know if this is bipolar, manipulative, or insane. Yeah, I, I don't know. But I'm assuming that after the cuss out, you were just kind of quiet. Yeah, and then. At the when you guys parked, it was kind of like all that was out the window for her, and she's like, "All right, let's have fun now." And I that mean, type of switch, that type of switch, it's kind of scary. I was like, "No, that's not healthy." Not I'm cool. Like I just, I just, I just want to go home. I want to go to sleep. So was it like w- w- was she acting like nothing happened, or was it at least like that whole like oh I know I'm, I'm I know we're like we got in, into it, but we let's try to turn the night around type of no nah, it was it was not the latter it was it not was the just, latter it was just like all right come on let's go yes yes e- I would even I would even I could even see the logic somewhat in that it makes no sense but it's like all right we you know. She might have still just wanted to hang out. It's the like, all right, I'm going to just, I'm not going to leave. Like, there's no way to turn that around. At no least, way. like, not getting out, especially when they're on the phone with the police. Like, what what do you think is going to happen? That's what makes me think, like, oh, okay, even everything before this was just a psychotic episode. Yeah, I, bro, I. <sighs> and you told her you were calling the police too, right? Yes. And what'd she say? And, and oh, she was she was she was adamant, like, go ahead, call him. I don't care. Call him. I guarantee it ain't gonna end how you think it is. I'm gonna go to sleep in my bed tonight. Where you gonna go sleep at? And that's what she kept saying. I was like, what does she got planned? What is she gonna tell them? But I had already been filming and record, bro. But I just at that point I felt Wait. so yes. This wait, is she said you're not gonna fall asleep in your bed tonight. No, basically, like I was gonna get arrested, right? And I didn't know if that meant she was gonna fabricate the story. Or what, but I was glad I had been recording. I had been recording audio and I just had my camera going too, just in case. Cause I'm like, yo, I ain't never seen Shorty act like this. This is some crazy ish. Like, I, mind you, we ain't seen each other regularly in months. Like, we ain't, like, we just catching up. And this is the catch up. And I was like, no. Nah. I, I feel like some people, and I feel like this is a very specific type of person. They 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 feel like they feel like uh it's almost like they know when they messed up to the point where there's no going back, so they just so keep going in the wrong direction. <laughs> the wrong it's like, direction. It's weird. It's almost like ah oh, damn, I fucked the night up. My bad. Let's just end it. It's like nah, let's let's keep going, keep going, keep going. And yeah. it's just like ah, oh, those people. It's very hard to watch. I feel like Natalie Nunn is like that from all oh. these damn clips on my timeline. Yeah, it's just like worse to worse to cringier to cringier, and you're just like, I gotta, I gotta leave this room. Yeah, yeah. That's hey man, listen. I, I, all I know is that person was blocked on every outlet, social media, uh, source, everything. I even Cash App, um, everything. You know, I, I don't want anything to do. And if I see them, never again in in my life, it would still be too soon. So you never I, uh, heard heard from her after that? No. No, 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 no. She's blocked. So even if a, she's blocked on everything, I, I, Facebook, everything, bro. So absolutely not. But if she, by some chance, that person does happen to uh, check out this episode and feel the way, uh, I just want to let you know that this episode, in part, is par, uh, sponsored by BetterHelp. Right. Um, and uh, yeah, man, because it's something else going on, and 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 you know, I don't know that their their history with that, but to anybody whether you thought about doing um therapy before or not i encourage you to absolutely check out better help okay uh i absolutely love the convenience that they provide for you you can do everything online uh from the scheduling to the actual meetings 
uh, the uh, the calls that you have or the virtual meetings that you have uh, to even text. So you have so many options with that. Um, and if you ever been in a position aside from a relationship where you, you lay down to try to go to sleep and you just like you can't turn your brain off, you keep thinking about everything. Better help is a great way to maybe dig into those thoughts and, and, and tap into whatever it is that's keeping you up at night, those questions, those fears, those anxieties. This is amazing to talk to a professional licensed therapist who can help you unlock and uncover whatever it is that is, you know, giving you that trauma, that, that, that problem, that anxiety, anything like that, or whatever reason that you can't seem to turn your brain off. So, um, you know, we are big proponents of mental health, especially men's mental health because we i feel like i have <clears throat> been disproportionate for so long from our community from our family members and not being encouraged to share our emotions and talk about our emotions and just being able to cry finding a safe space to cry is is difficult for certain people um so i want to encourage you guys to check it out visit betterhelp.com slash diys today and get 10 percent off your first month that's better help help.com slash diys and get 10 percent off your first month we thank better help for sponsoring this podcast and being a continued sponsor of the show in general so i got a quick question about uh old psychiatric <laughs> Oh, crazy. Um, so the, the girl, she says, after the car ride, after the refusal, after the police, because I'm assuming while you're waiting for the police, you're not even in the car. You're just standing outside. Yeah, hope, right? standing outside. So she was okay with just yeah. being in the car by herself as long no, she as she was in the moving. car on her phone, scrolling TikTok and Instagram like it was a regular time. OK, so question, you know, like, you know, like in the movies when somebody's in like a hostage situation or something they'll try to act friendly um, like again oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. when they see their moment for escape they're like they they're just like yeah come on when she gave you the offer of like all right just talk to me for 15 minutes and and I'll get out that's immediately you, what i thought did you switch or were you just like all right all right no fine. i was very like, i was okay, i begrudgingly got in the vehicle right and so um when finished the talk and she's like all right i'm going to get out your car she grabbed the stuff out the back. No, I grabbed the stuff out the back to hand it to her through the window, right? When she uh she she got out the car, she came around to my side. She's like, no, open the door. Give me a hug. I was like, I don't want to give you a hug. Give me a hug. I'm going to get back in the car. Wow. Right? Right? Oh. Right? This is, this is the diabolicalness that I'm dealing with, right? So I get out the car and roll the windows up because I had the windows down so, you know, people can still see inside. Um, Give her the bags. Give her a hug, right? She all was like, why are you acting that way? Why are you all of this, right? When I get out the car and I close the door, I give her the hug. I lock the car and I open up the Uber app. I'm like, I would rather my car get towed from being in front of the elevator than me try to get in and she run back around or run to the back seat and hop in or something like that because my car recognized the key <laughs> and it's just like, bro, I just I couldn't chance it, bro. So I called the Uber. The Uber got there because she was playing back and forth, like popping in the elevator, been popping up, like, ah, got you. Oh, like, uh, right? you serious? Bro, I am not kidding you at wait, all. Wait, wait. She she got in the elevator and then got back out, like just kidding. Yeah, like press the door open button. So and it was so close, I was like, I don't think I would be able to get in. So I called the Uber. And then uh once the door was closed for a while, I canceled it and I ran around to the passenger side. I didn't hit the fob. But it recognized it, so I just got in, and that's the only door that it unlocked. And then I got in, I climbed over the front seat, and the doors opened again on the elevator. Press start, took off, skirted off. Oh, she came back out? Yeah, she was still there. Yeah, I don't know if you would want to leave your car there. It would have been on camera if she would have did anything, though. That was my only, like, bro, I just, I just, I'm telling you, like, I'm really downplaying it. And how scary and crazy it was for me as a black man and a black man that supports women, bro. I it had me fucked up for a couple days. I'm not gonna hold you. Like when I got home that night, I told Farron about it the next day. And I have homegirls that would have came to my rescue without a doubt, right? right? But then it's like 
I call somebody on another black woman to beat up a black woman. And what if charges would have been pressed? Or what if the cops actually would have came at the time that they are fighting or engaged in whatever? And she kept saying that. She's like, who you gonna call? You gonna call your, you gonna call your wife up to beat me up? You gonna call you gonna call your homegirl to come beat me up? She this was the stuff that she was doing, bro. It was mental warfare. That's insane. It was absolutely a it's it it was so triggering that it took this long for me to talk about it. This didn't just happen like you know, this past over the weekend or last bro. It, this is I'll tell you offline, but okay. it was just bro, it was a minute ago. It was traumatizing, hey. bro. Again, I, and like, cause I feel like I can't trust anybody. Like, I how they say, um, uh, no good deed goes unrewarded or something like that, or or unpunished. No good deed goes unpunished. It was like, bro, I literally just offered to take somebody home, and this is what happened. And it made me not want to be open to people. It made me not trust people. It made me not want to make new friends any of that type of stuff because it was like it was that triggering for me and this was and an again, old friend <laughs> I'm, I'm giving i'm giving you the shortest version of it i'm not even telling you all the crazy stuff Damn. it bro that shit fucked me up for well, real that's, that's actually really scary because it almost is like some women know that if you're the type of person which you are that isn't willing to take it there you know what i mean like most Unfortunately, most dudes in that scenario would have resorted not necessarily to violence, but to try to physically remove them from the car. And then the optics of that is you driving by, you see, you know, somebody trying to pull a woman out the car. Exactly. You, you, you're done with, you know and what I mean? All the stuff that went through my mind, bro. It's like, all right, let's say I would have took your approach and squirted her with a water bottle, right? Then she hits me, knocks my glasses off my face, makes my nose bloody. It doesn't matter. Like, if I respond from that point on, regardless, mm -hmm. I still put my hands on a woman. If I don't respond, I still initiate it because I was antagonizing her with the water. If I'm just trying to pull her out of the vehicle, I'm on her side of the car trying to pull her that out of the crazy. vehicle, yep. and she she accidentally breaks a nail, and the nail comes back, and now her fingers bleeding, or you know, I let her go, she slips from underneath from uh, within my grasp, and she hits her head on the 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 door jam or anything like that. Now she has this bruise, and it's like. Oh, that nigga put his hands on you? Anything, bro. I'm thinking about all this stuff. And it was like, at that point, I couldn't do anything but submit. Yeah. I, I'm, it was, it was, bro, it felt like a reverse kidnapping. How are you keeping me hostage in my vehicle? I'm, <laughs> I'm at your house. I'm ready to go, bro. Like, <laughs> some of the stuff she That's did, I was wild. telling my homeboys about this. Um, a little bit after it happened, I was telling him about it. And I was like, bro, had it not been me in that situation and we was watching the show or something, some of the stuff she did was hilarious, right? Just the the sheer gall and audacity was it was absolutely wild and hilarious had I not been a person Dang. in that situation. That's actually insane though, because it's like I mean, some some women know the system, you know what I mean? It's kind of like uh, you know, it this is random, but it reminds me of the end of get out when the white girl was like on the floor and the dude was like holding on and the cop showed up and like she made that face like you already know what it is like yeah. like like some some women just know that they could that if if, if cuz it seemed like she ran out of leverage and then just turned into a child like all right well then i'm not going anywhere call the police you're going to have to move me and some dudes would just be like okay bitch but if if you not if you don't want that if you don't want that smoke, especially if you don't want, even want to put your hands on somebody, Bro. then you really shit out of luck. And the worst part is, is that the cops that you were expecting to help you never did, that, showed up, never showed up, or could have showed up and arrested you. So Bro, there's not, I, I, not I, a lot I, of options. I mean, the whole time I'm in the car talking to her, I'm keep looking at the review. I'm like, I know that they have to come. I was on the phone for thirty minutes. From start to end, on hold for 25 minutes, they confirmed my phone number. Both dispatchers confirmed my phone number and my vehicle. They had the address. I'm like, for sure somebody's going to come. They have to at this point. And I wonder. That's crazy. Bro, I, 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 it will forever be a core memory. And out of all the times, all the times we've ever actually hung out and, and when things were cool, 
all of that will pale in comparison to this one moment. <laughs> I will yeah. never, ever look at her as the same person again. Well, that's what she wanted. Ever. She wanted a memorable, a memorable time, right? <laughs> yeah. And, and Farron and her had met previously in the past. And when I told Farron the story, she was like, next time, if we ever out and you see her, you got to let me know because I don't remember what she looked like, but I'm going to break her fucking face. And I was like, I absolutely will not. I absolutely good, good to know either. though. Yeah. <laughs> and that's why I was I was nervous to call Farron the night because I know what she would have did. I know the energy she would have came up with. So I was just she like brought the hands. <sighs> that's that's Farron ain't got no hands. She would have came up there with her hair wrapped up. I'm like, what are you doing? Take that goddamn scarf off. What do you <laughs> this the scariest part is like what I really wonder what she wanted. Like, what level did she want it to get to? It was almost like like she was trying to set you up in some type Bro, of way. Like I asked her, or that, asked that's one of the things me. that I left out, but I asked her, what's your end goal, right? Because most times when people want to talk or people have a problem, you have an idea in your mind of how that retribution or how fixing that looks. So it's like, all right, you've made this grandstanding, right? What is your end goal? Is it for me to see it from your point of view? For me to admit that I was wrong or acknowledge my wrongdoing or how it made you feel? Is it to, you know, make a lasting impression? What is your end goal with this? And she she wouldn't give me anything. She was like, sit down, talk to me. Get in the car, close the door, talk to me. Her saying you're not going to fall asleep in your bed. There's so many random steps in between what was happening and that that was happening in her head. That That's the scary part. I'm just like... Are you trying to get me to? Are you trying to bait me to go to jail? Like, I, I I don't know. The only logical thing I can think of, which isn't all that logical, but I've dealt with, is like, you ever broke up with a girl who just could not accept it, and once they realized that you weren't coming back, they just tried to stay in your life negatively because mm. it's, it's almost like it's it's she's she's just like I ain't losing you, but since you're done. I'm just going to keep doing this so we could keep play, spending time together. So maybe the end goal was like, even though he's done, I'm still going to get this 15 minutes. <laughs> hey, and she got 40. She got 40. I was like, bro, and it's so crazy because this is something I've known for a while. So she knows triggers. She knows my triggers. She know I don't, I'm not a person that really argued. Like people have seen me and Farron get into it and I don't really raise my voice like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I try to stay calm in all of those situations because I grew up seeing my mom get beat, physically beat, when she raised her voice, when she tried to be combative, when she tried to stand up for herself. So I am very, like, chill in those situations because it is very triggering for me. And my first instincts is to shut down. And that's what I did for for years when me and Farron were married early on as I wouldn't even engage in a conversation. I would just shut down, get quiet, or I'd leave and be gone for hours. But now I'm at a point where I can at least have the conversation if it seems like it's, it's, it's going to be beneficial. If I'm talking to someone that's level-headed or mature enough to actually have a conversation where you, you get your point out uninterrupted and you let me get my rebuttals uninterrupted. If I feel like I'm engaged in that type of conversation or with a conversation with that type of level-headed person, even if they're upset, then I'll engage. But like, if I think that me saying anything is going to take it to the next level, regardless of my right of my response, it doesn't matter. I'm not going to, I see no, I see no benefit in it. And that's where it was for me, but it, bro, it, it was, it was tough. Like that shit still fucks with me, bro. I'm not going to hold it. It's definitely scary. Cause it's one of those things I'm like trying to put myself in that scenario, but there's, it's almost like we, there's, there's so, there's so much stuff in media and society that's pressuring or telling dudes like yeah it's okay to smack a woman it's okay to blah 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 do this put your hands and but it's like those of us who have no interest in that we don't have any training on what to do in this type of scenario because like, we don't want to we don't want to physically harm them I, I you know i believe that came from a genuine place too i don't think that you're just like man i don't want anybody to see me touching her like it, it's it, sometimes it'd be like i don't want to put my hands on this person that also it's the optics are crazy. If, if even if you're just trying to get her out the car, it's not going to look good. And then you have the police killing people who uh, killing black men who called them all the time. So it's almost like, what what do what are we supposed to do in this scenario? Like, who do we even ask? 
for for, 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 for advice. <laughs> I know, I know that is that is, bro. It, it was so crazy to me, bro. I I, I never. I was so, I was as confused in that situation as I was when I first started to use Prize Picks. All right, and for those that don't know, Prize Picks is one of the largest independently owned daily fantasy sports platform in North America. All right, now when I first got into the daily sports, uh, daily fantasy sports arena, I didn't know what was going. on. I'm not gonna hold you. I had to call BT and Jay Phillips, uh, Mr. Bank Shot, because I was like, Yo, I'm seeing people come up on this. You know, do the whole parlay thing. I don't know what I'm doing. Please explain it to me. And so um, they basically broke it down to me like this. You're not playing against a ton of other people like with most of the daily fantasy sports uh, platforms with with uh, prize picks. It's just you against the number. So instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stats projections and watch the winners roll in so basically like um i i bet lebron will hit you know 30 points tonight it's a home game um he usually plays better when he's at home not as good when he's on the road so i'm i'm, I'm betting he's gonna he's gonna make more than 30 points right and uh i bet he's also gonna have more than six assists right and that's what you do versus betting against thousands of people who do this every day so for people that just want to try this out and try your luck and see what you can do this is the best place to do it prize picks is the most fun i've had winning up to 25 times my money this football season alone you just um you just select two or more players pick more or less on their projected stats and place your entry it doesn't get any easier than that prize picks is really simple to play I can make my picks and I submit my entry in less than 60 seconds. You ain't got to go online and do a whole lot of research. And all right, if I, if I, if this plays, no, I can't do that. And I don't want to manage when people be doing the sports fantasy teams. I'm not going to manage the stats of eight to 10. I'm not doing all of that. That's why I'm with prize picks. So I'm, I encourage you guys to check it out. Prize picks weekly offers. Um, I'm sorry, they offer weekly promotions and that can lead to big payouts like Taco Tuesday. Each Tuesday, prize picks discounts select players, uh, projections up to 25% to provide even more value. So go to prizepicks.com slash DIYS and use the code DIYS for a first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. So if you put in a hundred dollars, they're gonna match you a hundred dollars. That is the max, but that's two hundred dollars to play with, or however much you are intending to put down, you're gonna double that when you sign up. All right. So go to prizepicks.com slash DIYS and use the code DIYS for your first deposit match up to a hundred dollars. All right. Prize picks, uh, the daily sports fantasy made easy for those out there. Try it out. Year. That's 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 tripping me out. That's pretty crazy. So last question about this. Mm -hmm. Um, the fifth, the the final, because you said 15 minutes turned into 40, and I could I can only imagine if she said 15 minutes and I'll get out around that 14th minute, you were like, All right, it's coming, right? Yeah, and so even with that, I didn't want to make like big Justin like yo, you said 15 minutes because I feel like that could have started it all the way back over, right? So but I'm it just, did. <laughs> right, but so I'm just peeping the clock. I'm like, all right, well, she had no intentions of it being 15 minutes. She just threw out a number that she thought would be small enough for me to handle, right? And realistic. If she had said five minutes, I knew she was lying. 10 minutes, I know she lied. So she said 15 is a perfect number that sounds realistic and it's not too big for him to like at least entertain. And this was after the cops did not come. <laughs> so this wasn't like at the same time as you waiting for the cops. This is you being like, oh shit, the cops aren't coming. So you already upset. So what y'all talk about? Because after this, you're an argument, a threat, and a, a cop call in to this. So bro, she basically just started repeating everything she had said and on the way over there. Like honestly, that's that's she went back to there. I mean, how do you even consider your man? Can consider yourself a man if you leave a black woman on the streets like that. Oh, it went back to judging you? Yes. Pat. It wasn't even like, let's it talk about this no, other thing? There was no new information being presented. There was no new information being discussed. It was basically a compilation oh. of everything that had already been said being told back to me again. Was it at least like, 
this is why I was acting like this. Like, no. can you was, can you understand? There was no, there was no reasoning for the behavior. None. And were you just letting it happen, or were you like talking back? Because it's forty minutes. I was, I was engaging. I was, I was engaging slightly. I was engaging enough to make her feel like she got what she wanted, right? Giving real answers, not just like yeah, whatever, yeah. Because like, I feel like that would just antagonize the situation more. So I, I was, I was very uh, intentional about my responses. But again, I wasn't giving something to the point there where it seemed. Um, I wasn't responding in a way where it's seeing confrontational on purpose because I didn't want to go back and forth about anything she had said. I was just like, no, nah, you're right. Yeah, I shouldn't have did that. You know, it wasn't my intent to make you feel that way and all that. That way, it's not like that reserves a rebuttal, right? right? Which is going to prolong this whole interaction because that's what I don't want to do. That's hella scary. That's hella scary that she's walking around out there looking for her next victim. <laughs> Woo! Bro, it's so much shit I will tell you once we get off and hop offline. But it's my fault. A lot of the signs were there early, early on. And you just be like, oh, you know, maybe, you know, person been hurt. Or, you know, obviously, they wouldn't. Obviously, if I had seen anything like this early on, would have did at that shit. But I, I never saw this level of it. But yeah, man. So it wasn't like a switch that happened out of nowhere. You saw a little because I'm assuming like if you're like this, if you're if this is your extreme, if it is her extreme, you got to be an asshole in every other. Well, there <laughs> every were, other there, part there of were life. Glimpses of it with how how she could spend something and not take accountability for her her actions of like how a disagreement came up on us, right? So uh, definitely, definitely. Is is about that, but yeah. I want to say I don't think I don't think I've had a, any interaction with a woman that bad. But that, didn't you say you had one that wouldn't leave your house or something at one time? Wouldn't leave, not like arm, you know, handcuffed to something. You better take me out of there. It was like before I before I knew how to be just blunt. I would mm -hmm. imply like, all right, I'm going to work later. And yeah. they took that as like, oh, I guess I'll just straighten up the house and, you know, be here when he gets back six or seven hours later. And then, you know, pull back up and just like, oh, that's the most. I don't I don't think I've ever had a, a scenario where someone like threatened to call the police because to be honest, like that's why it's very this this story is very scary because mm -hmm. overall, like black women know that that's a dangerous game. You know what I mean? Like I don't, I don't necessarily hang out with a lot of black women who play that. Like yeah. the whole go go ahead and play. Uh, call. I, I didn't think I was. I don't think I no, was hanging out. With one. That's actually. I mean, hopefully, it's as rare as I've seen. Mm -hmm. Um, but no, nah, nothing, nothing where like someone dared me to be physical i had i had that jamaican girl destroy my house um but like that's pretty crazy I, too i just had to, i just had to sit there and watch it happen <laughs> that's almost is as crazy as i don't know if you heard this story but the the this doctor uh i can't remember if he was a surgeon or not but basically he was airbnb being his guest house oh. and uh it was a luxury airbnb in la his lady checked in and then she refused to pay or leave. It's been 540 days. Whoa, more than a year. 540 days. And basically, because I've read a couple stories on this. Basically, this is what happened. She was staying in this place. And I guess she told him about some stuff that she wanted to fix or he needed to fix. And he didn't move fast enough for her. So she went to like the LA housing authority and they basically was like, um, these things have to be fixed with something with the shower. And I think it's something else with the door and these things need to be fixed or the tenant doesn't have to pay. Right. Or you have to pay for her relocation fee. If you want her out and you don't want to fix it, but basically this, this, this place shouldn't be rented right now with these things because he didn't have a housing authority come out and check it. I bet, I think he basically made a space into a living space and then started renting that out. Um, well, at this point, 
Um, she stopped paying rent in April 2022, and she just simply didn't move out. And now she hasn't paid since then through Airbnb or to him or anything. And now she's saying she's not going to move out unless he pays her a relocation fee of a hundred thousand dollars. So she was homeless before this. I don't know. She did a long-term rental. So I don't know if she had just moved to LA or she had moved out of her apartment and was doing the Airbnb thing from month to month. But she did a long-term rental on an Airbnb thing. And this is, oh this is what happened. God, like, we, I think we've 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 covered uh, this back when that um, documentary about squatting came out. This might be the worst nonviolent crime ever, because this is basically your scenario times a hundred thousand. They in your space, like I mean, hopefully if you if you do an Airbnb, this is maybe just one of your properties as opposed mm-hmm. to where you live. But I can only imagine like somebody just walking around your spot in their draws, like get used to it. And then you talk about police not being able to do anything. Like legally, they can't do anything. And if you fire on them, you wrong. That must be and hell. She's, <laughs> excuse me. He's tried to get into place to make the fixes and the updates so she can get out or start paying rent. But she's changed the lock so he can't get access to his own property. That's that's when the normal person starts looking up hitman like prices. You know them dumbass people, them, them dumbass people that be googling like how to hire a hitman. And shit. Yeah, <laughs> that's that type of shit. What do you do? What do you do? I don't know. I mean, well, anything that happens to them is gonna immediately be traced to you. Like absolutely, absolutely. So you just gotta be like, oh, I got drunk, and I decide I wanted to have a fish fry. So I started two skillets full of grease and I forgot about it. And the house caught fire. Woo. Thankful for my house insurance. My <laughs> Wait, my but then you would insurance. have to break in to do that. <laughs> no. So she's in one part of the property. So like, let's say you have a main house right here and no. then you have a, yeah, you have another property. I mean, you have another extension on this side. He made it's that. Attached. Attached. It's attached. It's attached. But it's attached, but still with doors, so that's why he can't get in. He can't even get over there to make the the, the updates to what she was complaining about because she didn't change the locks on those doors. I'd so he doesn't even have separate. access to his entire property because of her. Uh, so, so they still they have to basically like live together. Yes and no, no because like that I'm sure it's, it's separate ex- interests, it's private interests. So mm-hmm. essentially, yes, they're living on the same property in the same thing, but they don't see each other because oh. they interest. Yeah. God. <laughs> I remember the when the documentary came out about squatting, it was like literally a roommate that was like mm. walking, you're like watching them walk around and yeah. do like that. That was that's that black lady, right? It was the two black ladies, and one of them wouldn't get out of get out of her place yeah it was like a I, I, that was one of the stories for sure but i mean they're they're just all like you you like even if that legally could work and that was a lick like you gotta be a whole different type of person to just live in that you know what i mean to be just yeah. like walking around your house like get used to it i ain't going nowhere like that mm-hmm. energy is wild because like first of all the, <clears throat> the chances of them just stabbing you in your sleep is so now, high listen Listen, Both ways. If you if you didn't sleep with your door locked, you're going to now. You're going to Ooh. now. That's crazy. There's no laws against that. Like it seems it's like it's so easy to prove that this person wasn't here before or shouldn't yeah. be there. But the laws protect them. <clears throat> Once you have lived at a place, I think for I don't know if it's 30, 60, or 90 days, and you've received like legitimate mail like certified mail like a bill or something as that is your mailing address Mm -hmm. you are technically a tenant at that point and if you don't have a written agreement of how long that person was supposed to stay there like be like oh yeah you stay here to you know get on your feet if you don't have a written agreement with the deadline legally they can stay there there's not much you can do at that point that's literally enough to make me not want to get into renting, let being like all Bro, of that stuff. The story I just told you, 
is enough to make me like never want to give anybody a riding. Like I don't want nobody <laughs> riding in my car but my family. Like so, in, so, <laughs> so it is. They took away such an innocent part of your life. <laughs> Bro, yeah, you me? No, I'll meet you there. I will meet you there, or I will Uber. I will never get caught in that situation again with someone refusing to get out of my vehicle ever again, bro. That is crazy. <clears throat> it probably is best just to meet people with. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's it's for the best, man. I I, I listen. I look. I do things differently now. <laughs> that buying concert tickets or sporting events or any type of live theater, all of it now, I do it differently. I do it all through game time now. Um, and I feel like you shouldn't have to worry or gain stress when you're out trying to purchase tickets to see a live event or concert, anything like that. Like those are very stressful times. And I feel like I've always felt like it has to be an easier way to do this. It has to be a, a cheaper way to do it. I've been trying to buy concert tickets before. Somebody bought it. I feel like while I was in my car and then it was like, oh, the price has changed. And I'm like, this is like an airline or a price line when they say your, your price has changed on your hotel. And I was like, I, I can't do this anymore. So I was I was super excited when I found out about game time and what they offer. Uh, I mean, they have killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat and the best price guarantee. Game time takes the, the guesswork out of buying tickets. Now, one of the coolest things I've, I've talked about every time we do this game time ad is the views from the seat. <clears throat> you go on other sites, we purchase your tickets from. And they'll show you just the map area around where you're going to be seated, right? But if you've never been to that venue before, and even if you have, sometimes you don't know what that seat looks like as far as view access to the stage, you know what I mean? Or or, or where you're going to be in the, in the whole venue. Like, you're going off of this little map thing, that's not, that's not, that's not enough for me. So I love the fact that Game Time gives you a real-time view of what the stage looks like, looks like from that seat, as well as the exit, the entire row, everything. You get to see everything from your phone while you're purchasing your tickets. Uh, and I love the fact that they're going to give you the lowest price guarantee event. Uh, they give you event cancellation protections, uh, job loss protection, all of that. And <clears throat> you know me, I'm somebody like, I ain't going to get up here and tell y'all about something and I ain't really check it out a little bit. Uh, I went on another site uh, that I used to buy tickets from and check their prices for the Usher uh, concert. And then I went on Game Time and Game Time tickets were 20 to $50 cheaper than this this other site so shout out to game time for actually walking and how they talk it um absolutely love the fact that they don't have any hidden fees uh you buy these concert tickets and you get a checkout fee you get a convenience fee you get a uh because you were born in the 80s fee. It's like <laughs> bro what are all of these fees and then you still got to pay taxes bro I, I absolutely hate it so find exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. And with zone deals, you get to pick the section and the game time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings. So download the game time app, create an account, and use the code DIYS for $20 off your first purchase. Again, download the game time app, create an account, and use the code DIYS for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again. Create an account and redeem the code DIYS for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest prices guaranteed. It's a great ass idea. It's a good idea. Yeah, we're talking about um, Airbnb nightmares. I have to talk about this one because we we're talking about not wanting to rent our house out to anybody. Check this out. This happened in Gwinnett County, Georgia. Mm -hmm. uh, there was an Airbnb host that was allegedly tied up and robbed by an armed man who rented a room in his home. Uh, Gwinnett County Police uh, says that Khalil Hamilton, a 26-year-old, is wanted after he allegedly rented a basement space on Airbnb, then tied up and robbed the owner of the home at gunpoint. This happened at uh, about 11 p.m. And uh, it said that Hamilton was using the home sharing site to rent a basement room in a suburb outside of Atlanta. Uh, about an hour after making it into the rental space, a Hamilton allegedly sent a text to the host who was upstairs claiming there was a bathroom repair that he needed help with completing. Uh, apparently he claimed there was a leaking toilet. And uh, as the victim was assessing the maintenance complaint by Hamilton, he brandished a black handgun and demanded the victim lay on the floor. He zip tied the victim and stole the victim's wallet. Uh, cash and credit cards and watch before fleeing the residence. 
that's really scary. But like all of that, just to rob their wallet is ridiculous. Like I'm assuming he had a fake Airbnb page, but they found out who he was immediately. So maybe, maybe he didn't. I, all that to not even rob the house. They just, they just robbed him. Uh, and uh, the messed up part was that the wife and kid were just at the crib upstairs. So that's like, hey, yo, I don't, I always, I always, I always have this thought in the back of my head, like an Airbnb. I never, I always have the filter of entire home because yeah, they're saying it just, it just seems super unsafe. I don't never want nobody in there with me. Y'all probably already got cameras in here. I yeah. don't want nobody in here with me. All right. And then that, that's, that's, anyway. Yeah, listen, because I'm naked. You gonna you gonna see how I'll be naked in these Airbnbs, right? I, I'll be I'll be full on naked. And the last thing I want to do is try to defend myself when I'm naked. Like nigga run up on me fully clothed. He got on knee pads, he ready for all the shit. And I'm naked. You caught me on the couch sitting mermaid style. I'm Wait. eating a bowl of cereal on my side. Oh, nigga, I'm dead. You don't have any like rituals when you're at an Airbnb? Uh like like do you ever just like I don't know, like stack stuff against the door or bring like extra locks uh <clears throat> depending on where i'm at like if we are like we would go out to to joshua tree i always got that thing on me mm -hmm. so it's like you come in here you gonna wish you didn't but that's because you uh, didn't fly right huh that's because you didn't fly yeah 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 it's because i didn't yeah. fly so uh other than that man um I, i'm just i'm i'm a stickler about the locks you know, and like even now Joshua Tree, because I usually get places that aren't close anywhere, using most of the sliding doors they have out there have that little stick. So once you close it, you put this little stick in between so nobody can open the door from the inside or the out because that stick is blocking the door from mm. sliding back. Um, big on that type of stuff. Um, where do you get the stick? It's usually there. It's like uh, you know, like the sliding doors that lead into the back door or on the patio, mm -hmm. right? They go to Home Depot and they just get a little just a piece of wood that, that fits. With the, uh, the other door, so it, pre it prevents the door from sliding back because of like, yeah. the stick right there. So <clears throat> I always use those. Um, when I'm in a hotel room, uh, as of like the last two years, I've been using the latch all the time. So the heart latch thingy, yeah, yeah, the hard one, boom, like that. Absolutely, yeah. I try to, uh, even if it's just like a noise thing, I'll like make some sound traps so that if anybody comes through this, <laughs> I'll hear it. <laughs> <laughs> and the maids sometimes be coming through looking at me crazy but and then a big thing is i'll like take i'll take like kitchen knives and stuff i'll, I'll grab like kitchen knives and keep them in the room just in case because <laughs> that should that should be scary sometimes oh, yeah, i never thought about that but that's a good idea yeah yeah <laughs> <It's like, laughs> I, I, I was just in a uh, a writing camp in uh Mexico City and we there's like a big Airbnb with multiple people mm -hmm. and I went to do the kitchen knife thing and one of them was already missing and I was like oh hell no nah. so I figured that one of them had one too so I just took the rest of them <laughs> I just had like a collection of knives if I got caught with that they would have thought I was crazy as hell bro. right <clears throat> that is fun <laughs> no it's took them that's insane. I always, I always think about like the Airbnb host being crazy, but mm -hmm. I never, I never heard a story where the the person who pulled up was crazy. And the dude apparently is he's still at large. Like they never caught him. Bro, oh, I'm gonna tell you this: shifting gears from Airbnb to hotels. So you know we supposed to go to a our, our, our European run. Wait, week. are y'all going to London or Paris? We're doing Berlin, London, and Paris. Oh shit! The bed bugs. I already told them I ain't gonna do it, bro. And his eye. Right, so here's the thing: I told Kev about a week and a half ago, like, "Yo, this Berlin thing is not getting better. We should probably go ahead and cancel." He was like, "Yo, you know what? The ticket sales ain't even killing like that. We cancel right now. It ain't gonna real be be a real big thing." And I'm I'm feeling the same as you. So <clears throat> we were talking about it in the group chat yesterday. Hey, what's and going on in like Berlin? The, Berlin is where the first show is. So we got a show in, in Berlin, Germany. Right. And then we got a, we got one in London, and then the infestation is in Paris. Paris. Was so wait, but why Paris. why why are you guys thinking about not doing Germany then? No, no, no. Um, I'm, if I said Germany, I meant Paris. Oh, but okay. I said the beer butt thing, so I was like, "Yo, it's not getting yeah. better." I, I'm I'm not really feeling it. And so <clears throat> I was supposed to take the family with me, 
right? I didn't bought their tickets, bought our train ticket. We we're going to catch the train from London to Paris. Um, we had to catch a flight from Germany to to London. We bought all these tickets, right? And so I told Kev, I was like, I ain't gonna be able to make it. Whatever y'all decide is cool. I'm gonna stay with my family in London. We're gonna stay an extra day. We were supposed to return on the 25th anyway. <clears throat> we're gonna stay an extra day in London on the 23rd. We're gonna fly back on the 24th, right? I'll, I'll just see y'all there. I, I missed this money. I'm sorry, I can't chance go on and grab them because they people have been posting videos of the bed bugs everywhere not just in houses not just in hotels and apartments these shits are on trains buses. they're on the buses which means that they're probably it's, it's a good chance they're going to be in the, on the planes all of that bro i don't want no parts of that whatsoever these videos right? are so horrendous i can't take i can't stop watching them also bro right. so <clears throat> I go, I, 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 I fair about the uh, train tickets. I was like, yo, go ahead and cancel some train tickets, right? I get on the line with Delta trying to switch my return date as well as my original destination to the same final destination. So I'm trying to I'm trying to come back a day earlier and instead of flying out of CDG, Charles Gore, I'm trying to fly out of Heathrow in London, right? <clears throat> $2,000 to change the tickets. That's what they want. They each want each per, per all together. It's like $640 per person. God damn. They want $2,000 to come back a day earlier and from a different country. So I'm just like, all right, well how about this? How about we just come back on the original proposal date so we just we just changing the location, right? Change CDG to Heathrow easy peasy fix, right? Mm -hmm. No, it's the exact same amount. And even Fine. if I cancel the kid and Ferris ticket, I don't get the money back. They will just get a credit on their accounts for the amount I paid for the ticket. So they get a credit of like $1,300 each. Mind you, my daughter don't go nowhere. Why y'all giving her that? You could give me that. I travel. Nigga, it, I'm it's not transferable? No. You think no. they would have some leniency during an epidemic? Like it's exactly. literally like a state of an emergency. They said they they said that they're trying to get it together before next summer when the Olympics, the Olympics is. That's yeah. how bad it is. That's what that's how bad it is. And Delta of all airlines, I would I would have thought they would be the most understanding, especially like we're going to be coming back on your planes. Yeah. Like you have to understand the 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 situation like bro, they they don't care. Them, them, that lady told me six forty dollars per ticket. So that's basically a $2,000 that I would have to come up additionally on top of the extra $1,200 I'm going to have to spend on purchasing another room for, well, paying for the rooms for another night. Because the room is going to be about three apiece, and I got to extend it for two nights. So that's going to be $1,200 plus it's $2,000. So what are you going to do? I'm going to cancel their tickets. They're not going. And then I'm just going to fly back the next day. And I'll just pay the difference in mine because I already have a credit on my, I got an e-credit on my account already for like $1,800. So I'll just take whatever it costs the difference for me to get back and put that on my ticket. So I don't have to come out of any, out of pocket. But even the credit that I have on mine, which is like $1,800, that's not transferable to them. Because if, if that was a transferable, I would have just paid the $2,000 with that and then paid the difference on my card. But they like, no. That that credit is in your name, only you can use it. And I'm just like, wow, you niggas is wild right now. I forgot that Paris was a stop. That's crazy, bro. I they Delta make me want to see it through, and then just bring up bring back a chopped up mattress full of bed bugs and just let that bitch out. Y'all want to play? Y'all want to play petty, bitch? I'm petty, petty. Chopped up mattress. <laughs> Paris has never looked more unattractive until this year. I mean, between. The bed bugs and all these random like TikToks that are coming out talking about how nasty Paris really is. Like it seems like somebody had something against Paris. <laughs> like Bro, after the first time, I never needed to go back ever again. I, I'm, I'm absolutely done with Paris, bro. The bed I thing is one thing, but saying that they were on the airplane, the train, and the bus seats too. Bro, they then... were showing that shit everywhere on the on the trains. They were they zoomed in on the on the seats on the buses because the buses got that little like old carpet shit feel on it bro that shit was everything they're just walking that around makes my freaking 
skin crawl. This Bro, type of shit. No, I great. don't want no parts of it, oh man. Oh my god. Yeah, oh they're right there, god. right there. Look god. at them. Movie movie theater seats. Like I don't I, I don't think I'm gonna feel comfortable on a on in public anything now. Like I've I've already been sort of freaked out about bed bugs and stuff, especially after the Vegas thing. So I'll like check my mattresses before, but like Damn, like plane trains literally everywhere that's public. Like, uh St. Angeles, shut your ass up. Tell my parents is like any other city. Y'all not about to slander my city. You are that from St. City. Louis, Missouri. That you have been city. to Paris, but you are not from Paris. That is not your city. They don't fuck with city. you like that, shouty. Okay, you cute and all that, but them niggas ain't gonna claim you. You ain't no flu full blood Parisian. She, she had down. one croissant out there. Right. She took a couple <laughs> pictures. Now she talking about y'all ain't gonna slander my city. I do want to ask you though, St. Angeles, who um y'all know the homie St. Angeles Dom. She has a, a candle line called St. Angeles. Uh, I need to hit you up because I need to see who you ship through because I'm thinking about going with ship station. Um, especially right now that I got the I got the, the body butters out there on the website. You can get it from my link tree or you can go to, to hear more.com. And grab them. Obviously, uh, I want you to do that because this is the calm before the holiday storm. Okay. So for those that are selling online that do participate in e-commerce, however you do it, this is the time to get all your ducks lined up. All right. That e-commerce business for the holiday rush is about to go crazy. And using ShipStation can make it the easiest way to get it done. Whether you're shipping from your house or a warehouse, ShipStation can make it easy and help increase your profitability. You get to save time by automating your shipping, um, all the returns, all of that is done in the ShipStation dashboard and it keeps the cost low. And with industry leading carrier discounts, you can't go wrong this holiday season and they will keep those orders rolling in. Um, you get a free trial and a quick setup uh, and now is the time to try ShipStation out if you've ever been on the fence. All right, ShipStation is the easiest. It saves you the most money. Uh, you get the same discount offered to Fortune 500 companies. Uh, you don't have to sign up and stay for a year-long commitment like some companies trying to make you do. This is the way for the, the entrepreneur, right, the, the, the independent owner to make a dollar and make sure that their, their customers are getting their product fast and securely all right uh absolutely love ship station absolutely love rocking with them we've been rocking with them for a couple years now and i sent uh when i was doing my my shipping of my shirts i was sending my shirts through ship ship station so uh familiar with the work familiar with their quality familiar with their prices absolutely love their pro prices and i love let, the effortless integration everywhere you sell online including amazon etsy ebay shopify and more again you get to manage all the orders print labels compare rates optimize every shipping uh every shipment and automate delivery notification it doesn't get any easier or any better than ship station so i'm encourage you guys to go ahead and do that now um you can get discounts up to 84 percent off usps and ups rates um over over 130 000 companies have grown their e-commerce business with ship station and 98 percent of companies that stick with them uh, started with them, have stuck with them. And that's that's an amazing clearance rate, 98%. So go to ShipStation.com, use our code DIYS today, sign up for your free 60-day trial. That's ShipStation.com, and use the code DIYS. St. Angeles said in the comments, she got a new scent called St. Louis. What does St. Louis smell like? Um, It's, a, it's very light notes of... Um, Chinese food um, it smells uh, <laughs> reminiscent of fresh white castles. Uh, you mix it with a, a, a little gunpowder, a little gunpowder, uh, and then uh, some some uh, paraglaze. I don't know if you you know paraglaze, but it's an old Victoria's Secret scent. But yeah, yeah, all the chicks in middle school used to smell like paraglaze. So that's that's basically what it sounds like. Very boarded up windows type of smell. <laughs> it's not, it's not going to open the windows. Board them up. <laughs> you, All right. you, you see how I have fun with talking about my city, St. Angeles? Don't do my city. I try to slander my city. That is not your goddamn city. Your city got bed bugs if you claim it in Paris like that. Hell of a um, bed bugs. 
Speaking of bed bugs, uh, have you seen Sexy Red's new sex tape? (laughs) You had a lot of good transitions today, so I wanted one. (laughs) Bro, first of all, I hate whoever she fucking with that did that. That's why I want to talk about this. I I despise anyone that would uh, violate someone's trust like that. The fact that she let him film it meant that she trusted him and cared about him enough to think that he would never do anything like that. And the fact that he betrayed that trust mm-hmm. and did that shit, and it I, it can't be for nothing more than clout. You know what I mean? Like, cause the 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 last guy that um I saw it had her live while she was sleeping. Yeah, he that was, was a rapper. Weird. I went to his page. I was like, oh, he a rapper. That's probably why he's doing it. And so mm-hmm. if it's the same dude that did this, it's like, damn. Like, it's one thing to try to expose somebody, like, of them doing you wrong. It's another to try to expose them for clout so you could try to get on off of that right. success. That looks right. so pitiful. Like, so pitiful. And honestly, nice. ain't nobody giving you clout for smashing Sexy Red. You're just not going to get it like that. That's not... This you smash period, somebody, yeah. bro. That's just, that's just sick. Come on, what are you doing? I, I feel like they should face charges. Honestly, I do. I was thinking that, like, how is that not illegal? Like, obviously, the sleeping one isn't illegal, but yeah, like, I feel the, like that was it, it, it should fall on the revenge for it. It really should, or something. And it was posted to her page, which could get her banned, right? So, it so was I just, don't know if she went oh, in, man. uh, maybe she logged in to her, her joint from his phone one time. He never. Or he found the password, or he just went on hers and, and did it. Maybe she fell asleep again and left her phone unlocked, and he did it like that. But either way, that is just that is it's that so is, it's it was just so I, weird because it's like number one, he wasn't in the video; it was first person. So and it was on her page, so it was just like, look, she's getting smashed. You know, unless somebody recognized his penis, I don't see where the clout would come from, unless they were just trying to get her knocked off you know like yeah. the whole like dudes being jealous of their girl or the girl that they messing with is so real like i didn't know that but like if that's a, apparently like a huge thing like if uh if a, a woman is out earning or just more popping than the the dude the dude will literally try to sabotage sabotage the, the her her career just to just to do it i think even like uh I remember like DDG had like a song where she was talking about like, I'm, I might just like sabotage you on Twitter just to do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and it's like women have been saying like, that's a that is a thing. Like a lot of women have been in a relationship with not, not a jealous dude of other dudes, like jealous of them, which is wild behavior. <laughs> no, I don't. Uh, first of all, I don't know the young man DDG. He may be a very skilled rapper. I can't name one of his songs, whether on like the regular Streaming yeah, platform or SoundCloud. Though. You heard you heard some of his music. I heard Geekin. That's a really popular song. Like it's it, he he does get a lot of hate. I checked his numbers. His numbers are legit. You know what I mean. But that song particularly was was pretty crazy, especially to be dating the Little Mermaid. <laughs> yeah, I, I just I just, I don't know, bro. I you know I, you got to be a secure man to I think deal with the reversal roles of. Um, earnings but i also that's i think this also outdated thinking bro like let me tell you something if farron ends up blowing up off of you know youtube and her new podcast which i think is very possible because she's super talented it's super fun i think she's funnier than me in in a lot of cases when it comes to like us just hanging out and her just being silly nigga i would ride her coattails to the top i stopped doing comedy i'd be a kept husband I make sure that the house is so fucking clean. Why? Why do I care? I did what I need to do, and it's 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 crazy because guys take so much offense to that. The guys that do take offense to it take so much offense to that, but they're friends with people who are bigger than them. Are you gonna you gonna try to sabotage Drake career because he's bigger than you? So if you're not tripping off of one of your homies being bigger than you, why are you tripping off your girl? Like this is supposed to be your your partner. This is supposed to be your real. This is supposed yeah. to you try to build with. Eventually, it's gonna come if you stick with it. And even if it don't come, let's say that you, I, I, I wish I think of it like this. I might not get Kev's numbers ever. I might not ever get Tony's number. I might not get Kev on stage or Kevin Hart's numbers, right? But let's say I get a million followers, right? On all of my platforms, million subscribers and all of that. That's a million people 
that fuck with me. That's a million people that made the choice to say, I like dude. I like what he I like what he delivering. I can live with that. I don't have this astronomical and unrealistic number of people that I feel like I have to do. I just want to leave my mark to the people who thought I was talented enough to give me their time and share some of their resources with me. That's good for me, bro. That is good for me, but I'm securing that. Mm -hmm. Like, this is a realistic goal for me. I know what I want career-wise as far as, like, what I want to do. Like, I, I would love to do three fire movies and have at least one good long-running sitcom. Everything else would just be extra. You know, hmm. if I did a comedy special, that's just extra. I'm funnier in person. Come see me in person. You know what I mean? The special, if I did one special, I would only want to do one. Really? Or if I did two, it would be two, two 30 minutes. I don't so want acting is acting is more up there for you than the special. Yes. Because I don't I don't want to hear me talk for 30 minutes. I mean for an hour. That's why I would do two 30 minutes, but I don't want to I don't want to do back to back hour long specials. I, I don't think I'm that interesting. And, and and if I am that interesting, check it out on the podcast. <laughs> podcast I don't age better. I mean, that's just a good example of somebody that's competing with themselves. A lot of people refuse to compete with themselves and they'll it's crazy. I talk to people who literally, it's like they, they set themselves up for a, a, a crazy bad time in their head. They're, they're competing with people who've been in the game like a decade and they're starting. And it's just like, why would you even, why would you even do that? Like, it's, it's almost like you're sabotaging yourself by trying to, but do, to do that as opposed to just competing with yourself. Because there's always somebody else you can compete with. Yeah. But, it's just it's just weird because it's like you're going to have your own niche. And like you said, it's like whatever you can do with what you got is that's the shit. And if you have a partner that's doing even better, why that people be thinking like, damn, I'm, I'm being I'm in the shadow. But it's like y'all are y'all are together, though. <laughs> so the rise is together. It, that would be like offset competing with Cardi B. It's like you can't. You can't. It's just, it, it makes no sense. But you it's two different things. dominating too. It's it, like when it comes to DDG and, and Chloe, when it comes to Jay Z and Beyonce, Jay Z will never have the diehard fan base that Beyonce would have because mm -hmm. men don't support that way. They show their support in other ways. People were for, foregoing paying rent. They at this one couple uh, missed their honeymoon to go to a Drake concert. It's different type of fan bases, bro. Yeah, you know what I mean. So it's like you why why you comparing yourself is. Comparison is the thief of joy. You only robbing yourself when you do that. And that's so. such a great example because Jay-Z only loses when he does compare, when you do compare him to Beyonce. If, if, if you don't, he's Jay-Z. Like he's literally like one of the greatest rappers of all time. One of the first billion, like the rapper billionaires. Like it's, it's, it's crazy that he's Jay-Z, but then people are still like, he ain't Beyonce though. Cause there's just there's just different levels to it, so mm -hmm. I just think that that's super weird for 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 dudes to just hate on their girl, especially in an age where like women have so much opportunity right now. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like there's there's so many women just like killing it that you're actually more than likely gonna be the one making less money, <laughs> and in certain in certain aspects, like that's actually way more likely than not. So I don't I don't see why people trip, and especially the revenge porn thing. That's just the lamest shit ever. Like you could tell she must be messing with a different type of dude because for that to happen twice is pretty wild. Now, there's like a whole bunch of people on the Internet that are kind of like side eyeing it as you do with everything on the Internet because she dropped music right after. Mm -hmm. um, but even even for Sexy Red, I'd be like, that's kind of wild for promo. Right. That seems I like think I, I, that the reason I thought it wasn't intentional on her part is because she always mentions her son. And if her son is old enough to work an iPad or an iPhone, he can he could find that out. He could see right. that. And and I don't see her even as ratchet and open and sexually liberated as she is. She don't want that. And right. she always talks about her mom too. And her mom, you know, this is the same thing. You don't want your mom to be able to open up Twitter and find that shit. That's not something you like go for. So mm -hmm. I, I I don't think she did. I, I really think that the old boy did that. And with the song dropping, that could have just been. You know, that's already planned a lot of times. So, and they, yeah, her, team, her team was probably like, listen, if they don't search you, they're going to search you. They're going to find it regardless. You yeah. might as well just drop this now while you're already buzzing. Maybe they'll take some of the attention away from it. And she, she's like, hey, I'm trending. So 
let's drop this no panties song. Yeah, <laughs> that was the song, no panties. Hilarious. <laughs> I've not heard that one yet. <laughs> yeah, that shit weak, bro. Man, that, that shit sucks. weak. That shit sucks. And yeah, she she did a mukbang with Zayas and the her baby daddy called from jail and started yelling at her and shit. I was just like, hey, this is this is a wild thing we watching right now. Bro, you know what's crazy? I was thinking about this a couple nights ago. I was like, it might be time to change my number. And I don't know why I had so much pride in having the same number since 2000. Mm-hmm. 23 years, the same number, never changed numbers. But like, I don't get why? no award for that. I don't get no award for that. And the same people who I've cut off, um, regardless if they're blocking or not, I'm still allowing a little bit of access because I have the same number. It might be time to just go ahead and switch up everything, bro. Like, I cut out drinking for the next for the rest of the year to New Year's Eve, uh, trying to eat better, trying to get this 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 healthy kick off. Uh, why not get it all off? You know, cut out the appendages that could lead to cancerous in, interactions and cancerous people, and just 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 start over with a new number. I feel that. I feel like with the with the switch of the fifteen, I would consider that. Yeah. Cause I've literally had I got a I got a cell phone in seventh or eighth grade and I've had the same number ever since, and it don't really matter because I don't be burning bridges like that. But yeah, I do like the idea of only having the people in your phone that you talk to all the time. And that's the thing, yeah. Because at first I, I would when I thought about it getting a new number in the past, I was like, oh, I got to reach out to so many people and give my number to. It's like I really don't. I'm going to reach out to the people in my top nine <laughs> and then I'll go through like my, my text space. messages. Yeah. That, yeah. On, on the iPhone, you know, you can have the people pin their conversations pin on the text message. What do you mean? Pat, you can have like. You can pin a text combo. Yeah. Look. Pat, go to one of your text messages and just press it. While, while the, all the threads are open, just press and hold one, and it should say pin at the very top when it brings Whoa, up. Whoa, no way. How, how, Patrick? How have you been here and didn't know this? No way. What? I don't see. I, 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 see the, I see why you would pin a comment like, hey, everybody look at this one first. But a text message? I didn't know you could do that. It's for easy think, access for the people that you talk to the most. So all nine of my slots are filled in. So that's crazy. No, that he'll be standing uh, right there. She said, "I have the DIYs group chat." That's the one I uh, did on uh, for an example. <laughs> that's crazy. So even if you're not in a conversation with them, you can just jump yeah. up. Yeah, you can it's just it's it's easy access, so you don't have to scroll through your phone like that. That was <laughs> one of the I'm major texting. updates from like the 14 pack. <laughs> That was last year's update. That's crazy. I didn't, I didn't even, I don't know anybody who even does that. All of us do it, Pat. Everybody except for you does it. Yeah, that's really Me, cool. the kid, Farron, all of our fru- friend group, everybody does it except for you. Oh, I'm pinning, I'm pinning well down. Yeah. I'm kind of, I'm kind of out. I did a uh, damn internet, my family. Yeah. <laughs> I'll use two out of nine. Yeah. <laughs> All right, fine, Dom. I'll pin you too. <laughs> Did she text you just now? Say, I better she be pinned this. Just now, do better. Pin me too. <laughs> <laughs> oh wish. my God, man. <laughs> As you wish. That is funny, man. Well, guys, that's about our time. Um, you know, not that many stories uh, from the internet this time, but man, life. Life, damn life, you scary. Life, uh, life, and life be life. Ain't you no know what's crazy. We talked about two stories where Airbnb people were going through hell, and it was a whole nother one with this guy who had rented out his house and to a tenant, and they stopped paying rent. They can't kick him out, I think, because of the squatters' law. And now he is Airbnb being the residents out and making money off of it, and still not, not the paying squatter. the guy rent. The guy is living in his van behind the goddamn property. We didn't even get to talk about that one. That's another story that's out right now. The, the squatter who took over the house started renting it out, and the person whose house it is is in a van. Homeless. Living in a van behind 
living in the van in the property on the property. Uh, he's probably considering jail. He's, he's about to crime. Like, he's probably I'm, just I like will that. crime you. You understand me? Wow. Yeah. Wow. No, I I couldn't. I literally can't even fathom that amount of being that furious. <laughs> I, I would probably drive my van at least down the street so I wouldn't have to look at it. <laughs> like, yeah, I think I'm having another party. Josh. I would for sure steal his Instacarts. Oh, man. Something, bro. Something. something. But I don't even know if dude living there regularly because he's renting that out Airbnb so much. That is Satan level devious activities. That is evil. All right. Well, uh, as always, guys, I'm to hear more. Absolutely not. I'm Patrick Cloud. And we'll see wow. you next time on another episode of Damn Internet. You scary. Peace, guys. Wow.